Hello YouTube, what is up? Today we are going to edit this photo. Uh, I already edited the color a lot, as you can see in Lightroom, but we are going to Photoshop it. So in this tutorial, we're going to fix uh, blemishes on the face. We're gonna dodge and burn or contour the face uh, via curves. We're going to learn how to contour the clothes or burn some color in there and make it look more vibrant. We're going to clone stamp out this uh, like light pole that was in the background when I shot this photo. And we're going to sharpen and brighten the eyes and then just fix any other issues that we find. So we're going to take this photo from a good photo to a great photo. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm running a Photoshop action from my friend Icy Photo. You can find her photos on Instagram uh, that I modified a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Um, so right now we are going to work on fixing the blemishes on the face. Uh, if you don't understand how dodge and burn works, I'll put a link in the description to my tutorial that specifically talks about how to set up dodging and burning. So if you're confused, go watch that video first and then come back. Uh, this layer is just a reference layer, so I'm going to add some temporary contrast so I can see any issues easier. Okay, and then I can go in here. Oh, what is this for? I'm so confused. So confused. Oh, okay. Is this for what I think it is? Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. This is dodge and burn temporary blur layer. It's going to be red. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my background uh, layer, which is Alt or, or sorry, Control J. Just Control J to duplicate the layer when you have it selected in the layers palette. Now I'm going to use a healing brush. So it's up here in the uh, toolbar. We're going to go with the Spot Healing Brush tool. That's sort of the easiest version of the Clone Stamp tool to use, in my opinion, because you don't have to define a source, you just paint. So I'm going to toggle, I'm going to use my left and right brackets on my keyboard to make my brush size bigger or smaller. And I'm just going to go around here and paint. Now it's really important that you don't check sample all layers because otherwise it's going to be painting your color grading or your black and white filter or whatever. So make sure that that is not checked. You're just working on the background layer, which we duplicated. So I can always turn it off or mask it out if I made a mistake. So it's really important to duplicate your background layer before you start using the spot healing brush tool. Ah, uh, it started raining outside. I find few things more satisfying than editing photos on a rainy day with a cup of coffee beside my microphone stand. This is the life. Guys, remember that if you have access to Photoshop or even a computer to use Photoshop on or even a phone to use Lightroom on, you are luckier than a lot of the people on this planet. So be happy about it. It's important to keep our perspective. So I'm just sort of painting along these like uh, a couple of wrinkles that were like really prominent. So if I turn the layer on and off, you can see what I've done so far. And I've only been working for probably three minutes. If you have a drawing tablet, like a uh, Wacom tablet, which is what I use, then you'll make basically all of Photoshop go a lot faster. Once you learn to use it, it's really fast. I have like the cheapest 
uh, or least expensive tablet that Wacom makes. It's um, it's just one. It doesn't have a screen or anything. I think it's uh, an Intuos. Yeah, I would recommend getting one of these. I like the medium size, but I've used the small ones too, and uh, those aren't too bad either. You don't have to use a drawing tablet. You can use a mouse and get nearly as good results, but it's going to take longer. So it's just a little faster and more accurate with a tablet. If you're using a mouse, I would zoom in even further, right? Since I'm using a tablet, I have a little bit more precision with like the pen uh, than my mouse, so I can stay zoomed out a little bit further. Typically, the further you're zoomed out, the harder it is going to be to do this, but the easier it's going to be to make sure that you're not overdoing it and you, you keep your bird's eye view perspective. Um, so let's turn this layer on and off. Okay, we're definitely getting there. The reason that I do this before I do frequency separation or dodge and burn is because it would take too long to dodge and burn all of this, and it's simply not necessary. Uh, and then for frequency separation, frequency separation isn't as good of a technique as dodge and burn in my opinion. You can get good results with it, but from what I've seen, it typically makes the skin look um, less real than dodge and burn. So if I'm trying to make everything stay looking really real, all I'm going to do is make my, my clone stamp uh, layer, which is my background layer duplicated, rename it clone stamp. And then after that, I'm going to go into dodge and burn, which is what I'll do now. And I will fix the, the, the shading of the image, right? So dodge and burn, um, is just all it is is it's a curves layer uh, that's brought up just a little bit like this and then another curves layer that's brought down a little bit so this is the burn layer and then where the curves is brought up this is called the dodge layer and we're just painting on this mask uh, for the folder that we threw our curves inside of so when I paint white on this mask because the mask is black it doesn't show up at all when I paint white it shows up so I'm going to go up here to my general brushes. I'm going to get a soft round brush, and I'm going to put my flow at 1% to 2% if you're new to this. And then I'm just going to start painting the areas that are too, uh, too dark or like look a little patchy, like they stand out. Nobody's face is totally perfect, but if you're trying to make like a fashion shoot or, you know, high fashion image, you might have to go in with dodge and burn and just even some things out. Now I'll probably go back with dodge and burn and I will sort of make the edges darker, edges of the face darker in a macro in a large sense and make like here, here, and here uh, brighter on the inside. But right now all I'm do trying to do is even out skin tones so I'm painting on my dodge layer to brighten it up and if I turn it on and off you can see what I've done so far I can turn off my check layers but if I add this temporary contrast layer in black and white uh, the black and white makes it so I don't get distracted by the color and the curves layer adds contrast, which makes it easier to distinguish light areas and dark areas. There's no reason to strain your eyes. And you can just add a curves layer and delete it later. Another thing you can do is turn the flow up and paint over the eyes. And if I make a mistake, all I have to do is hit X on my keyboard. It will flip my swatches over on the left there. And now I'm painting with black, and I can go back over it to delete, or rather to mask out the area that I just masked in. If I made another mistake, I hit X, flips my swatch back to white. Now I'm painting with white, which means I'm revealing the dodge layer, which means I'm brightening up the eye. 
So let's turn off our check layers. We'll hit our before and after. This is looking pretty awesome. Like to me, this is already really good. Um, not really any reason to, like there's no need to go further unless you want to. You can go to the burn layer and you can paint with white to reveal it and sort of darken down the edges. This is a bit much. I'm gonna turn my flow down to like 6% and I'm just darkening down Sort of contouring the face here. And if I wanted to, I could fix these highlights too. Okay, so if we zoom out, we turn off our burn layer. That's what we did. Let's zoom out even further. I think the burn layer is a bit much. I'm going to just turn the opacity on the layer down to, we'll say, 50. I'm going to go in actually and paint with white. Sorry, paint with black. Like 18% flow. Just to soften up the edges there. OK, now we can play with the opacity of our burn layer. I think it's we're at danger of it looking too edited. So we're going to work on the other areas of this image and then we'll come back with a fresh pair of eyes and see how it's looking. Um, as far as the eyes themselves go, those are plenty bright enough. One thing we can do is duplicate our clone stamp layer, double click, rename it to eyes, and then Da, 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 da. Go in here and go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Set the radius to about three to six, depending on how big your image is. And then let's turn the amount up just a little bit. That's a bit too much. Something like that looks great. Actually, it looks great on the whole image, but I'm just going to mask it in. So alt click on the mask button down here. It's going to create an inverse mask. So now we can't see the sharpen layer. And then I'll paint with white. Turn my flow way up. And that will let me sharpen just the areas I want to sharpen. We need to uh, we need to fix this layer in the background. Or sorry, this pole in the background, this light pole. So I'm just going to duplicate my clone stamp layer again, and I'm going to rename it Pull Clone Stamp. And then we can try the Spot Healing Brush tool. It may or may not work. Yeah, that's pretty good. Probably start out with this and then go back with the um, Clone Stamp tool later. Actually, what I'm going to do, rather than do that, I'm going to go in with the Quick Select tool. Shortcut for that is uh, W. And I'm just going to select her romper really quick. And then I will inverse my selection, Control-Shift-I. And now when I paint, I'm not painting on the clothes right here. So I can clone stamp without being afraid of messing up this edge, right? So S is the shortcut for the clone stamp tool. Put my opacity down at 30% by just hitting three on my keyboard. And now we're just gonna go up here, blend this in just a little bit. Have my layers sampled to current and below on my clone stamp tool up here, current and below. It's really important. Again, we don't want to be sampling like, you know, say color grading that's on top or something like that. So let's turn this layer on and off. That was really easy. We just got rid of the pole. If you wanted to, you could go in and lens blur this area. Um, select it and lens blur it. But I think nobody would really notice and it looks fine to me. Um, let's see, do we have anything else? Fix the blemishes. 
We dodged and burned specific areas of the face. Uh, we need to work on the clothes a little bit, and then we'll be done. Okay, so I'll make yet another layer of my background. I'll just call this dodge and burn clothes. That way we keep everything separate and distinct and we don't get confused. Um, let's see, what happens if we go? So what I did is I just set this layer to color dodge. I'm going to hit Alt and click on the mask button to create an invert mask. And now I'm going to paint with white over the areas that I think could use a little bit of brightening. Just the areas that I want to highlight. happens if I do it there. Interesting. Okay. If we zoom out. Now I need to, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Now I need to color burn this layer. So I'm going to go up to the burn tool. Let's see, actually I'm going to duplicate this, get rid of the mask, delete, set this to color burn. Alt click on the mask, paint with white, flow at 12%. I'm going to paint some of these shadows just to add some contrast. I can also use this to separate like her arm from her torso, for example, if I wanted to. Okay, so let's look at the before and after. When we started, the image looked like this. Now the image looks like this. So that is how I would edit this image. It is completely subjective. Um, I'd probably do the color grading over again, but I did the color grading a while back and I didn't feel like uh, totally redoing all of that. I just wanted to show you guys these main techniques. So mainly we made a duplication of our background layer to make an eyes mask, and then we sharpened it a little bit. We used dodge and burn, a link in the description to a tutorial on that. We used a dodge and burn layer to brighten up the eyes and even out the skin across the face, uh, which is pretty easy. We used clone stamping, uh, just to get rid of blemishes that were distracting, but we left a lot of the skin uh, like texture that wasn't distracting. We got rid of this pole in the background. Um, we used a burn layer to sort of contour the face just very slightly. And uh, we used some crazy curves adjustments and a color fill, a gray color fill layer set to color uh, just while we were dodging and burning and working on skin texture so we wouldn't get too distracted. So I hope that you guys found this tutorial useful and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.